that done from the grassroots level. Uh, members of Congress have to know and see and feel that the people of America care about these issues, and that's where the organizing comes in. Third piece is we have to story tell. So we talk, I'm sure everyone went through, if you volunteered, they talked about your personal story, training, or whatnot. But when we're doing issue organizing, our work is more than just what we do. If the story is not told and heard all across the country or in the media, um, then it's, it, it minimizes the impact. And I'll, I'll show you an example later. Uh, the third thing is training. So everything we learn from, from OFA, one, two, three, oh, 12, uh, we're going to use all of that and train folks. Our national grassroots director was the national training director in 2012. So she's extremely committed to it. We have the training alumni corps, and we're pulling together a big conference in the first week of June to really train folks in the state of Texas, um, not only how to organize around issues, but also some of the electoral organizing. And the last thing, which I'm excited about, is empowering. Um, so not only will volunteers with OFA continue to do the, the basics that we did before, but you'll also be empowered to take part in the fundraising side of, of OFA and get access to the donor network. You'll be empowered to work with the press and learn all the communication secrets and tactics that we use during the campaign. Um, um, so those are the five big things. So I want to just walk you through quickly um, how we execute an issue campaign, what that looks like, um, and then talk through some of the major issues we have, and then we'll get through more of the nuts and bolts and the breakouts. Does that sound good? All right. So there are five big components to every issue campaign. First, there's grassroots activity. If the people aren't fired up about it, more than likely most issues will never be resolved. So you are the beginning of every single thing that we care about. We saw this with gun violence. We saw the, the great outcry from people around all the gun violence incidents, and people said, enough is enough. And that's what inspired our members of Congress and our president to move forward to take action. We gotta keep moving, exactly. The second big thing, second big component is online ads and social media. As much as we like to laugh about Twitter and Facebook, it is a real serious presence in our community. And if we're not in the conversation on these uh, digital and social media uh, tools, then we're not a part of a big part of the conversation. So that's a big part of what we'll be doing. Uh, component number three is earned media. So while a member of Congress, you may knock on his door, uh, his front door of his house or the, or the back door of his office every single day, uh, what's also in some ways more effective is him seeing that clip of you talking straight to the press and straight to his constituents about why you care about the issue. So earned media is going to be a really, really, really big part of what we do moving forward for every issue. Number four is paid media. So when we started organizing around gun violence prevention, not only did we have activity on the ground and earned media from the community talking to our local press, we also purchased media and we had ad buys where we targeted, frankly, uh, certain members of Congress or certain folks who were either for or against the work that we're doing. So that's a big component of what we're doing, and you'll learn more about that. And the last thing uh, is just leveraging the full progressive movement. So as OFA, unlike the campaign, we can now work with a lot of other nonprofit and progressive organizations. Uh, for example, next week we're partnering, partnering with over 800 mayors as part of the Mayors Against Illegal Guns Coalition. Uh, we can partner with faith-based organizations now. We can partner with the NAACP. We can partner with unions. We can partner with uh, Sierra Club. We can partner with so many different progressive groups across the country to make sure that our forces are combined to get the work done. And that's something we, we haven't done before, um, but we're excited to do. All right, so in my last five minutes, I'm going to race through one big example, um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about what's next. So February 22nd, uh, we had our first big gun violence prevention day of action. Did anybody volunteer for that? Yes. Thank you, thank you. Um, so on this day, we said, hey, enough is enough. We need to get out there and do something. What are we gonna do? Anything to make sure we make as much noise as possible. We did press conferences, we did rallies, we had candlelight vigils, we, had, uh, we went to uh, where there were uh, places where victims of gun violence um, were being honored. We were there, you know, educating folks on it. We had so many different creative ways to really gain attention. Um, and this is what happened. Over 3,000 people took part, just off an email, no staff, right? Uh, we had over 117 events in 80 different congressional districts. Uh, from that, we had some really serious and big, big national coverage. We had coverage from MSNBC, uh, I think CNN, the Huffington Post, the Washington Post, New York Times, and a host of local uh, media outlets. The Dallas News uh, covered us as well. Um, so we got a lot of energy from it. Um, and then we also look at the digital side of things. We sent an email that said, who wants to stand up for this? Who wants to be a part of this? And 95,000 people within the first day said, I want to be a part of this. And they signed an online petition. 
Uh, the last piece is that we launched a smart media campaign. So in 13 districts, we purchased ad buys and put some more pressure on these actual members to make sure that they're getting into the fight and taking a stand on gun violence prevention. Uh, a couple highlights I like to show. The one on the left from Dallas News. Um, anybody know Marsha Fishman? Are you in here too? You were there? You in there? She's <laughs> I'm ready to move around. Uh, so we had this great press conference. It was only 15 people, but 15 people made it to the front of the Dallas News. And not only was it in the front of Dallas News, this is something that was carried nationally. John Carson, Jim Messina, Barack Obama, David Clough, all of them saw this and said, wow, what's going on in Dallas? And we had our big founder summit last week, and they said, well, bring that, the, the coordinator from Dallas up here to D.C. And Marsha Fishman, the one in the red, she came up to D.C., not because she was some amazing, connected, big donor, but because she was someone who took action first. And she sat down with the president, she met our, our campaign manager, our executive director, but she did an awesome, hey, just, you, you get that, man, there you go. Um, <laughs> but she had an awesome, awesome event with only 15 folks, but had, a, I think, four different press outlets there. Another example, in Tennessee, in Chattanooga, Chattanooga never gets any serious uh, media love. They took a bundle of flowers and, and, and they brought the stories of gun violence victims. A few folks, there was a mother there who lost her son, a teacher who, who lost a, a student to gun violence, and they went to a bridge, they told the press, we're going to the bridge and we're gonna honor those that have passed and call for action. And they unleashed these bundles of, of rose petals um, in front of the media. And that was such a powerful picture. I mean, you see it here to the right, but this, was, this has been used on ads and flyers all over the country to really kind of show how important this issue is. And that's just, you know, four people who wanted to take action to stand out. And the press latched onto it because they saw that regular people want to take action. So that's just a, a quick snapshot into what, what we can do and, and the power that you have, even if you're in a state like a Tennessee or a Texas that is not used to being that battleground or not used to being in the spotlight, um, you two, those two states are two examples of states that were traditionally red that have become the spotlight of, of the work that we're doing. So the last thing I want to just go over um, with my last minute is just, uh, not that one, uh, but just some of the issues that we're going to take on. So first is gun violence prevention. We know that on April 8th, the Senate is scheduled to take a vote on gun violence prevention. And we have to be loud. And we have to be a part of this conversation to make sure this, is, this actually happens. Um, so that's one big issue, the most urgent issue that we're working on. The first week of April, we're going to launch our immigration reform campaign. Our immigration reform campaign manager is Emmy Ruiz. Y'all know Emmy? Yeah, so, <laughs> so Emmy is in D.C. kind of sculpting this whole thing out. Um, and she just, she was so sad when I flew down here. So she misses you all. Um, but that's our second big priority. And our third one is uh, climate change. Um, and then we're going to dive into a host of other issues, including uh, women's health, enacting the Affordable Care Act, um, and also introducing the organizing around local issues, uh, which is also a big part of what we'll do. Um, so with that said, I have a lot more to share, so hopefully you'll join us. Um, well, I look forward to talking to you in our breakout. And thank you so, so much uh, for taking this time out with me. So thanks, everybody. <laughs>